going to be a little bit faulty. The New Testament had the same language problem, but because Jesus was God, he didn't, he didn't have the human brain having a second filter there. He had a perfect understanding of God, and he could explain it far more clearly than any of the Old Testament prophets could. And he could answer the disciples' questions in real time. Since he had at least five contemporaries writing stuff down, five that we know of, five that are in the Bible, we have a five-sided account to cross-reference. Each of the disciples remembered a different thing, wrote down a different thing, thought it was important. So we have a much broader view of God in the New Testament than in the Old. Coming back to the question, is God angry? No, not by nature. We see this by Christ's actions. But there are things that make God angry. Things that we do, just like there were things that the Israelites did, just like there were things you did as a kid that made your parents angry. But the great thing about anger is it's a strong emotion, and the only reason that God gets angry is because he cares so much about you and he doesn't want to see you mess up. That's the falseness in humans that makes God angry. It's the arrogance of every religion to think that God, our God, everyone's God, is a proponent of their religion. Methodists think God is a Methodist. Lutherans think God is a Lutheran. Baptists think God is Baptist. And Seventh-day Adventists are not immune. We believe that God is a Seventh-day Adventist. I can't tell you if God is a vegetarian <laughs> or a teetotaler. And I'm not even going to speculate about who God's chosen people are. That's dangerous. However, I will tell you this. The most literal definition of Adventist is one who is waiting for the advent. And I don't know this. I haven't found specifically any scriptural backup for this. But it does seem to me that some part of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, somebody upstairs must be sitting on the edge of their heavenly seat going, can we go yet? Can we go yet? Please, can we go yet? We're still ready to go back. And if that's not waiting for the advent, I don't know what is. Amen. I'm sorry, this has been really short. I was a debater. I talk fast. <laughs> um, but I'd just like to end with one more attribute of God. It doesn't begin with an A, which most of the others do, but I think it's important. So if you turn in your Bibles to Matthew 22, verse 31. <coughs> Mine is the King James Version. I've got it here in my notes. Um, Jesus speaking. He says, I'm the God of Abraham the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. We are the living, we believe that, and God is our God. But if you're not out there living and breathing and making use of your life, I have to wonder, are you a little bit dead? Because if you're dead, then none of this means anything. It has no use whatsoever. So that's what I have to say today. Go out and live and breathe and do the things that God has set up for you to enjoy doing. Amen. Because I think that is an important part of who God is. Amen.